So let's um, let's go for this. Let's get started with it. Um, so just um, something to talk about first. So we have approximately normal with a mean of 80, standard deviation 7.7. .7. So sometimes they might just give you a notation like this where it says capital N 80 comma 7.7. .7. So that just means the distribution is normal looking like this little bell curve with a mean of 80, 7.7. .7. Let's see, you should have been able to fill in the graph to look along these lines, unless I got it wrong, but I think that's pretty good. So that should be your labeling for the graph. So minus 7.7, .7, minus 7.7, .7. you keep going. Um, plus 7.7. .7. So the thing from the other day was this general rule, rule of so the middle one to one standard deviation is 68% of the graph. From two to two standard deviations is 95%, and from minus three to positive three is 99.7 okay so that would be if it was like perfectly normal but we're approximately normal so these are just going to be approximate probabilities these are not perfect for everything but um so if i'm looking at that so number two so you're doing it so number two what percent of the runs will be greater than 87.7 so that was just a question of how many are greater than that uh, one, that was that one standard deviation? So how much is greater than that one standard deviation? Um, so if there's 68% in the middle, that meant there is 32% on each edge. So if there's 68 here, 30, 32%, and when I talk about this, like maybe, I think I did a better job on six periods the other day. Like we're talking about this area right here. Like we're trying to find what percent of this curve is like in this little space right here. And there's like data points in there. So we're trying to find that. Uh, there's 68, so there's 32% on each edge. And then I have to cut that 32 in half. And you should have gotten 16%. So basically I got 100 minus 68 equals 32, 32 cut in half is 16, because it's symmetric, perfectly symmetric. Okay, what percent will be between 64.6, which is at negative two standard deviations, to 87.7, which is at positive one standard deviations? So, could go about this a couple different ways. So we're trying to go on this one, we're trying to get this blue part here. This whole little area. What percent of the graph is that? Okay. And how'd you get that? That's right. Okay, what percentage? Okay, so yeah, you split, like, yeah, where you, you, was that from yesterday's, right? Or the Wednesday's, I mean, where we already had those, yeah. So you can do it that way. Uh, you can also do it, like, I split it, so let me erase this so that I can do it. I sometimes just split it like this, so I know that half of 68 is 34, and then this part from over here is supposed to be half of 95 which is like 47.5, I think, off the top of my head. And so then you just add those two together. So then, yeah, that's 81. You should have gotten 81.5. Whatever way you did it, it should have been 81.5. Uh, concerns on those two before we keep going. Understanding how I'm getting there. You might not have 
gotten it or remembered, but at least is there an understanding? Of okay, and then number four, what percentage of the runs are less than, so we actually just basically took up the entire, now I'm trying to get less than 64.6. So we yeah we we solved for every single little part of that. Um, so if I didn't have anything else, what I would do is say this is ninety five percent. So that means there has to be five percent left over on each edge. And then so I'm gonna do a hundred minus ninety five is five. And then it's split in half, so that would be two and a half percent left over on the edge there. So the middle of it's 95 percent, then it's symmetric, so it has to be an even two and a half and two and a half. Is this on, um, or the quiz on Tuesday just over 2.2? Uh, yes, yeah. Um, okay, and then number five. So, uh, what percentage of runs is less than 68.45, which is like, unfortunately it's not one of our standard deviations. All right, so with y'all, um, you probably could have gotten a good guess. So, like we just calculated that this little part was two and a half percent and we also know that outside of one standard deviation is 16 percent so we know it has to be somewhere between 16 and two and a half and it looks like it's in the middle of those two but the problem is this is just not on like a, a linear drop rate so you can't just say, okay, what's halfway between those two and get your answer. Um, so right now, you shouldn't have been able to get number five. So that's what we're gonna do today. So number five, you could have got a good guess, uh, maybe something around like eight to 10% would be like a pretty good guess. Um, but we're gonna actually, how do we get that? Um, so like on this one, it's not a perfect standard deviation. So how are we gonna find it? We're gonna do it using the uh, tables, the digits that I got for you here on your table. So you should each have one to be able to look at. Uh, so maybe let me pull that up for my online folks. And let me see. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the formula sheet and tables. And, okay, so I'm gonna go to table A, which is a bunch of Z, Z values. And we kind of briefly mentioned reading this table yesterday. So these are a bunch of Z scores and the probabilities that are less than those values at a specific Z score. So at a z-score of 0, 0, 0.00, there is 50% less than because a z-score of 0 is at the mean. So that makes sense. And then we have all these percentages that are less than. So what I need to do to be able to actually solve for the percentage is I need to be able to get the z-score for this value. I need to get what is the z-score for that value. Okay, so yeah, what do you do? What's the equation for z squared? Uh, 68.45 minus 80, which is the mean, and then mm -hmm. over 7.7 standard deviation. Perfect. Yeah, so the formula that we do here is you take your value, you subtract the mean, so it's the distance you are from the mean, and then it's the average, it's not just distance, but it's the average standard deviations. So that's why then we divide by standard deviations. So a z-score is how many standard deviations you are from the mean. So you take your value minus the mean, 
and then take that into account of how many standard deviations of it. So yeah, when you do that, 14 point, or is it 14.4? 13.5 divided by 2 would be 1.5, yeah, and negative. Thank you for that. So it would be z equals, z equals negative 1.5. That is our z score. That, so that is not our answer. Okay, that's just a way for, we're trying to get what percentage of our graph is below, is less than that z score. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna draw us, you don't have to do it on this one. We are, I do want you to do it. It's a good practice, maybe you can do it. Um, it's just drawing a general picture of what you have going on. So like, I have a mean of 80, I have 68.45, and I'm trying to get this shaded area less than. So your thing doesn't have to be a perfect picture. But what this is gonna help you do is, I see this little area to the left because I wanted less than. So if I get an area that I'm trying to say is like 80%, you would know that you're wrong because anything that doesn't cross over this mean would be less than 50. So I just like drawing pictures to make sure our probabilities are actually up. So let me look at the Z table. So we're going to look at our table and we're going to try and find a Z score of negative 1.5. And it's negative 1.50. So if I look at this, I've got Z equals negative 1.5. And then I'm at a perfect 1.50. So on a Z score, you want to round to two digits. So this one was a perfect value. So the value there is 0 0.0668 is a z-score of that. There would be, so 0 .0, 0 0.0668. So from here, I use the table A to get me a value of 0 0.0668. What that means is that is 6.68% less than that value. So what that would be. Didn't you say the number should be like between eight and ten? Yeah, I think I was just that would just be like a good guess. That was mm. our guess. But our guess was wrong because it doesn't drop so our guess our guess doesn't drop at like it doesn't drop at an even rate that's like halfway between there. So I need that's why just trying to say what's halfway between those doesn't work. I need to kind of use my table to get a better, a better estimate. So our answer is that right there, or you could write it as 6.68%. Either way. Either way. Um, you should get comfortable with the decimals. And you can just leave it as a decimal, that's fine. So a lot of the times they give you answers like multiple choice, stuff like that in decimal form. So then that is our percentage. Okay. That is our that is our value. Alright, so let me go back through that before we move on to the next one. What we had is this value was not a like one or two standard deviation. It was in between, or negative one or negative two. So what we had to do is we had to get it into a z-score, take that z-score and look it up in our table of values to get what percentage is actually less than. So if you, you can also do this for any z-score. I could do this for these other problems too. So I could come back up to this problem here I could get the z-score for it and go look it up in table A and get roughly the same answer as this. It might be like 2.48, something like that. But it's gonna be pretty close to that. So I could do this, convert it to a z-score and look it up in the table for any of these normal distribution problems. 
So this whole 68, 95, 99.7 is just for when I have perfect standard deviations, I can use that. So if I don't, I want to use a z-score for sure. Okay, so let's do this with uh, number six on the back side. Number six. So the first thing I want you to do before y'all do these problems is we're in the same thing here. The first thing I want you to do is I want to see a ton of like miniature pictures for every problem that you have. It will help you not make silly mistakes in the long run for the year. So I want you to make a little problem and we still have the same thing where I had a mean of eight. And then I'm just, it doesn't matter if I put it the exact same way. I'm just gonna put, I know that 85 is over here to the right. And we're looking for the percentage of this data that is greater than, so this little filled in spot of the curve, that little green area. So what these pictures help me do is now I know that I'm gonna be less than 50% for sure. Because what we know is from the mean, less than is 50%. So if you draw yourself a picture, I, you're, not, you're never gonna make the mistake of getting like too high of an answer. Um, because now my picture clearly is telling me this thing needs to be like at least less than 50 Okay, so this value is not quite one standard deviation away, so I need to get the z-score for exactly how many standard deviations it is. So I do my value minus the mean divided by standard deviation. which I got the other day. We're gonna do two decimal places at 0 0.65. So for reading the table purposes, the z-score, two decimal places. All right, so I'm looking for a z-score, 0 0.65. So I'm gonna go to my table I'm going to go to the positive side, 0 0.6, and then I have to scroll over to the 5 column, and it is that value right there, 0 0.65. So, can't read my thing. So we're at 0.7. Four two two. Let me. Oh, that works. That works out pretty good. Um, so my table, table A, from this gave me a value of what was it? Seven four or something? Uh, seven four two two. Seven four two two. Okay. So what does that value mean? That means seventy four percent would be less than, so everything on that table that you're looking at is the values that are less than that number. So that's saying 74.22% is less than. So because you draw yourself a graph, I know that there's no way it, it should be bigger than 50. So the 74 number is off. So I need to take 100% minus 74% to get my final answer, which 0.2578 should be, unless I did some wrong math. It should be what you think. So that is that little area there, because we were specifically wanting greater than, not less than. So everything on that table is less than the z-score. So if you want greater than, we just have to do one minus it, or a hundred minus the percentage. One hundred minus seventy-four point two. So, or 
25.78%. Either way, both are fine. Okay, so, um, so what you need to do on these problems, you need to show that you did your z-score, you need to show that you got this from table A, and then if you had to do something else, you know, show that you did 100 minus it. So, writing out your steps, showing you know what's going on, and that's what that would be. So, a reminder on z-score, this little .65 meant we were 0.665 standard deviations above the mean. So we were over here at not quite a full standard deviation. So that's why we have a higher percentage than 16. Yeah. Brian did run one down. All right, let's do another one. Again, if I'm, if you need something, let me know. So what percentage of the runs are between 70 and 95? So I'm going to draw myself a cute little picture again. And we are wanting from 70 to 95. I'm wanting a middle, a middle range here. Okay, so I'm wanting the middle values. Okay, so let me, uh, show you the game plan before we do it here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the z-score for each of these and the table only tells me the values that are less than. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the values that are less than 70 and I'm going to go get the values that are less than this one and then the way I'm going to get this little leftover part is I'm going to take this value and this value and subtract them. Because if I subtract this one from this one, it will give me this blue part that I desire. So that's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to get the z-score for this one. I'm going to get the z-score for this one. I'm going to find those values and then subtract them in the end. Um, okay, so I'm going to do the z-score for 70. You have to do it for both, so it doesn't matter which one you do first. So I'm going to do it for the 70 one. I'm going to do 70 minus 80 divided by 7.7. 7. So that would be negative 1.3. And then just so I know that I'm reading the table correctly, you can just go two digits, say 1.30. Which maybe I'll just go ahead and get that come over here to the table and look at it. So negative, what did I say, negative 1.30. So I'm going to come up to the negative side, 1.30, 0, 0, 0.0968. So 0 0.0968. So then, so table A tells me that that value would be 0 0.0968. That would be this little part. So I got the z-score. I got the percent that's less than that value. OK, I'm going to do it for 95 minus 80 divided by 7.7, .7, which is 1.95. So I'm going to come over here, go to positive 1.9, scroll over to the 5 column, and that is 0.97. 
let's see, I got, this is this little value here. This one is this big value. And so to get our little middle interval, if I'm trying to get an interval between the two, the last little part is I'm just gonna do 97 minus, minus this nine. Seven, seven, six. So about eighty, about eighty-seven point seventy-six percent of the data is in between negative one point three to positive one point nine standard deviations. So I can get any with this thing. I can get any interval I want. I don't have to be directly at like some sort of value. So this is normal distribution. I have a number and I'm trying to get a little area under a curve. I'm trying to get a little, if it's a normal distribution, we can uh, do stuff like this. So it's super helpful. Okay, so we did, we did less than, we did greater than, we did in between. And then number eight is the last variation that we have. So there's, there are basically four different problems that you can do with these things. You can have less than, greater than, in between, or now we have Marty wants to be in the top 15% of all possible speeds. What speed, so what number does he need to be at to achieve the top 15%? And let me give you another way that they ask ask this sometimes. They could ask instead that he, that Marty is in the percentile of, what would the percentile be for 50? Yeah, you'd be in the 80, so he is in the 85th percentile. It could, it could ask you that in that way. Like Marty is in the 85th percentile and his distribution is normal with the standard deviation of this. What value is Marty at? Okay, so let me draw a picture of what's happening here, because this one's different. So we're at the same picture that we've been working on. Okay, so instead of this one, the other ones, we've been wanting to know what percentage you're in that's greater than or less than. On this one, we have the percentage and we want to know the number. So on this one, there's some sort of top 15% that he's at, and we don't know what number he is. So this, this is our question. This is our, our problem. We have a percentage, and we want to know the number. What we just did on the other three problems is I gave you a number, and you told me the percentage. So what we have to do is we have to do our process. So we have to do the, uh, the whole process backwards, basically. So instead of doing the process z-score to table A and get a number, I have to do get the number, go to table A, get the z-score, and then I get my number. It's going to be the opposite. Uh, so let's, let's find this out. So I want the top 15%. This graph is showing a bunch of percentages. So maybe, let me zoom in. And if we're wanting the top 15%, all these values are less than, so I'm wanting to look for the value that's 0 0.8500, or the closest thing to it. I wanna look for the value that's at 85%, because that would be the top 15%. So I'm gonna look, and all of these values that are positive z-scores are high. So then I've got uh, 8531, 8508, and 8485. So there's not a value that's direct, directly 85%, but this value right here, so maybe let me pull up the page actually. Uh -oh. Okay. So this one, where is it? 
this is the closest thing we have. So the top 15% is the same as the looking for the bottom 85. So there's my number that's the closest thing I have to 85%. So that is at a value of 1.04. So our z-score equals 1.04. Does this sound believable? All right, I'm looking for my 85% number. Then I get my z-score. So I'm doing it all backwards. I find my percentage, I see what z-score that is. And let's go see where that's at. So I looked. For table A, I looked for the closest thing to 8500. That value, so that value gave me a z-score of 1.04. Okay, so the z-score formula is z equals value minus mean over standard deviation. So what we have is I know that my z equals 1.04. I do not know my value. So I'm just going to say value. I do know that the mean is 80 and I do know that I need to divide by 7.7. there. Okay, now you just have to do algebra on it. So I have to solve for x, solve for value. So you would, I'll just walk you through it this one time just to make sure we're all okay. Got to multiply each side by 7.7, .7, which 1.04. Seven is 8.008 equals value minus 80. And then to get my value, I need to add 80 to each side. So my value equals 88.008 .008 miles per hour. And there's my answer. Um, you would probably be fine with 88, but since it was just right there, I'm just going to go all the way out. All right, so I just did the whole process backwards. Got to do a little bit of algebra. From now on, I'll probably just let you, you know, do that. I won't do it out step by step, but at least I'll give you a little reminder there basic solving, and I got my value. So if it gives me a percentage or a percentile, um, I need to work backwards. Go to table A, get the z-score, put in it into the formula, solve for value. Instead of getting my value, getting z-score, going to table A and getting my answer. So it's just the complete opposite process instead of one way. All right, so that is four different ways, the main four different ways of solving with normal distributions. I can get any percentage, so like there's a blank percent chance that you were in here, or there was, there's the 85th percentile guy, or um, here's the values that were from here to here, like the percent of people or whatever we're talking about. Um, and so this stuff is like super useful and is key, especially for later on in the year stuff. So four different main ways here. So now we're just gonna do some problems basically the rest of the day to make sure y'all are okay. Um, so yeah, let me just write down the process for these big ideas. So the first way is basically, if it gives you a value or values if it gives you like your number, like you went 82 miles per hour, 
and it wants you to know, so it gives you, so maybe I should write that. So if it gives you the value, and your question is what percent, I guess I should have wrote that the other way, but that's okay. Um, what you wanna do is you get your Z-score, you look that up in the table, and you make sure you don't need to like subtract anything from it. So if it's less than, then your table A is good. If it's in between, you need to subtract something. If it's greater than, you need to subtract from one. So last step would be make sure you don't need to subtract anything. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. So like, basically if it's, if it's asking for the thing less than, then that's what that does. If it's asking for, if it's asking for greater than, then what you need to do is you need to do one minus your table A number. And then if it's asking for in between, I'm gonna go over here real quick. If it's asking for in between, what you have to do is you have to get those two table A numbers. So you have to get two different Z scores and subtract them from each other. So table A minus table A. Both of those table A1 and table A2 versus each other. So that's kind of that process. The, maybe I'll just try and fit it in here. If it gives you a if it gives you a percentage and your question is what is your value? So if it gives you this way, you just need to do the whole process backwards. So do it backwards. So what I do, step number one would be look up my value in table A. Uh, which would get me my z-score. So table A would get me, gets me my z. Then you put in z into the formula. So plug into z formula. Step number three is solve for value. gives you it gives you your number and you want to know what that value is so it gives you your is you always need to know what your question is asking. What percent is at least 290? So think about what at least 290 means. Let's do a couple minutes. So basically we're just going to spend the rest of our time which is 35 plus minutes. We're just going to do a bunch of different problems here. See how well you got it down.
let you go backwards to see. Mm -hmm. It doesn't let you see it. I can't do it Yeah. So when you're at home doing the homework or the take home test, uh, do the, you've got the table A from Schoology uh, on the formula chart. So make sure to know that you got that. Relaxing to have a when you actually draw this really nicely, you know, you get a nice practice. And you're like, oh, that was a good. One. That one wasn't as good. But I like doing the normal curve, you know. Uh, okay, so he's at 290 over there, and we're wanting at least 290. So that is the smallest value that I want to accept. So what we're looking for is this shaded area, all of that. So it should be a pretty big number. It's going to be bigger than 50. For sure. Um, so the first step you need to do is I need to know what value that is. So you do 290 minus 304 divided by 8. Because I had a mean of 304, standard deviation 8. So I think that's at negative 1.75. So then you look up table A for negative 1.75, and it says 0 .0401. 0 .0401. That's what that value should say. All right, so I'm like, oh, great. I don't know what that decimal means at all. So yeah, 0 0.0401, that's the right answer. But like, if you actually sit here and think about it, that's a tiny number, and how the heck is this tiny number that big of an area? So that 4% that it's talking about is over here. So please don't put that as your answer. Like, logically think about it with your graph. And you have to do one minus that number to get 0.9599, right? or 95.99% of the graph is taken up by it. Okay. So, tell you, this is definitely a multiple choice uh, option for you. That is 100% gonna be like A or C, because y'all like to guess C. Like, on the AP test, they know. Like, they're gonna put that on there, and you're gonna be like, great, I got something on the test. It must be right. Please think about it and like look at your picture and like look from there. So it'd be 
95.99%. Think about what our picture is actually looking like. Okay. Uh, it seems like we did okay on that one. Uh, let's do number two. Number two. time. Oh, that one was really nice. That one was beautiful. Look at that. Except I didn't put the mean directly in the middle. That, that was more uh, okay, so we're looking for the top 10%. What, how many yards did he hit the ball using his top 10% of ever drives? Or for the table A part, you're looking for the bottom 90%. Or another way to put it is he is in the 90th percentile of his drives. Okay, so you look on the table. So I will pull this one up. And I'm looking for the bottom 90% because this graph always shows less than. So I'm going to come over here and go to where is point nine zero zero which it's never really going to be a perfect value. So I see a value 0 0.8997, 0 0.9015. So the closest one to it is 1.28 at 0 0.8997. So I'm going to go with 1.28 as our closest z-score. I just want to get the closest value to it. So my table A told me that that value was a z-score 
of positive 1.28. So then I just use my z score equals whatever that value is minus the mean divided by standard deviation mean. So multiply by 8, add 304, and his top 10%, any drive that goes over 314.24 yards is in his top 10% of ever drives. So if he hit one 314 yards, he's not in the top 10%. If he hit it 315, then he is in his top 10. So this is like his threshold for getting into his top 10% of scores. Um, okay, so solving, solving the This is that in your packet if it's the next page or if it's two pages later. It's two pages later, so keep flipping one more until you get to at the top of it. It says section 2.2 review worksheet. And it says something about Mr. Wilcox. Alright, I want you to do number one, two, three, and four. This one goes through all four different types. Of problems. So I want you to do number one, two, three, and four. <coughs> Let me give you a while. It's just, you gotta, it's not too bad once you get it down, but you gotta work out the kinks. So, gotta do some.
And then you don't have to, it, this is asking for less than, so you don't have to subtract it from one. So like that value that you get is your answer. I thought it was Yeah, so faster would mean less than. Like if you want to be fast and high, I know, time is so weird. So you have to get those from table A and then subtract. Mm -hmm. And then, so like, because these are um, more than two digits, mm -hmm. you're gonna round, so that's, you're gonna look up for 0 0.14, and now on this one, you're gonna yeah. look up for 1.29 yeah. on the z-score. Negative. So it's like, I got it. So like, you go to negative 1.2, and then so it was 0.29. So that would be that value. Okay, thank you. Oh well, that's okay. Uh, 
So we have to get the table A value for that, the table A value for that, and subtract the two to get the answer. So you get like, I'm just gonna do it to see what you, hopefully your Z scores were negative 1.285, which would be 1.29, and then 0 0.14, and then you look those values up into table A, and you get 0 0.0985 and 0.5557. And the difference between those two is 0.4572, I believe. Okay, so some common problems were uh, z-scores calculated wrong or just looking up the wrong spots in the in the table, looking up the positive ones instead of the negative. So, so like I did point one two eight instead of one two nine, are you gonna like um, set differences? Uh, if it was like I mean I'm just telling if it was the AP test, like it it'd be wrong probably. Like you get points off, it wouldn't be an E. It'd probably go down to a P for that problem then, um, unfortunately. And then the multiple choice, it, they might be mean and do that small of a difference. They might have a problem that's like four, four, eight, and then you chose that one instead. So we do, I do, you do need to be careful on the rounding, yeah. Um, so yeah, that is important. Um, okay, so then just looking through the next one. So I want to be faster than 1.72 minutes. So in this case, being fast is having a less time in minutes. So I'm actu actually wanting the less than value. So you calculate a Z, which I got of negative 1.71. And then you look it up in the table, and it immediately gives you that that is about 4% is less than. And then that's your answer. Mm -hmm. That one was tricky because it was talking about faster, but it did want it, it, did want it like that. Okay, now number three. Um, 1.84. Um, two, I want, did it get more than? So, it should have gotten a Z score of 2.29. Your table gives you a value of 0 0.9890, which that value is this, less than. So you have to take one minus 0 0.9890 to get 0 0.011 or 1.1% for that one. Alicia, you look concerned. So I did it right, but I wasn't thinking about it right. But I got the right answer. <laughs> okay, okay, interesting. All right, and then the last one, just for time's sake, I'll be glad to have you help you with help you with any of those. Uh, okay, the top three percent, the number, or it could have asked for the ninety seventh percentile, anything like that. But I want you look up in your table. I have a question. Okay. So the best of three percent would be the lower numbers. That's sorry. Oh yes, you're right. You're so right. You should never do time. Dang. Yeah. Can we like time is evil. Existence. Evil, evil time. That's yeah. true. The fastest 3%. You're right. Okay. So 1.84. Good catch. So I'm just looking for the, the value in the table that we need to look for is the closest thing to 0 .300. So I don't know. I, it's probably just going to be the opposite of what I did, but I have to do the problem now, too. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Uh, why am I having trouble finding it? 
All right, there it is, point zero three zero one. That would be a z-score of negative 1.88. Oh yeah, I did get that z-score. So I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> Maybe just the phone. Yeah, because I did do that. Oh, because you would have gotten positive 1.88 the other way. Okay, so negative uh, 1.88 equals your value minus 1.84 over 0 0.07. And I did not, Reagan, did you get that value? I got one, like the ending value? Yeah, the, yeah. what? 1.7. Seven, zero? Seven, two, yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, so that should be about so that's a good catch, because otherwise you would have gotten 1.97, which is yeah. what I got, which is yeah. wrong. Which is yeah. So that's good. Good to make mistakes. That's why we need to look at different problems. Okay, so we got three minutes. I actually didn't expect that to take the whole class, but that's okay. It worked out. Do you have like three whole times? Yes, I do. All right, so over the weekend, you got some homework. We got a quiz on Tuesday. You can take care of the take-home test. All fun. Okay. And I need to write down my correction there. Uh, I would say no. If AP classes don't, I don't think those would either. It is. It's under. Uh, it's under. Uh, formula sheet. Yeah. It's on the main page.